Hokie dokie. In this problem, they ask what is the maximum rate of change of this function and rounded to the nearest multiple of 10. So we first want to find the rate of change of this function. In other words, we want to find y prime. Then they ask, what is the max of that? So in order to find a maximum or minimum of any function, we find its derivative. And so the idea is we'll find the first derivative, then find the derivative of that, that is the second derivative, and then set it equal to zero and solve for t. So let's talk through it, wasting no more time, <clears throat> excuse me, jumping into the first derivative of 502. 502 goes to 0 since it's a constant. And then dealing with this term, we carry down the minus the negative 496, leave the e term exactly the same. So this is like the derivative of what I'll call the outside layer. And then our inside layer is this uh, negative 0.6t squared. So we want to multiply by the derivative of negative 0.6t squared, and that is negative 1.2t, because the 2 comes out, multiplies by negative 0.6, so we get negative 1.2, and then t is raised to the first, so we'll just call it t. So altogether we have this, and it might help to go ahead and multiply the negative 496 and the negative 1.2. Negative 496 times negative 1.2 gives us 595.2. So a positive 595.2. Let me make sure I had that right. Yep. And then I'll go ahead and bring this T that's on the back end. I'll, I'll tack it up front. And then we'll leave the E term in the back here. All right, so this is y prime. This rate of change function is what we are finding a maximum of. So we take the derivative of this, and then we'll set it equal to zero and solve for t. So here and here we have a t term being multiplied by another t term. Each, uh, each t term we can call a and b respectively, and so you might uh, get what I'm getting at here. We're trying to do the product rule. We must use the product rule to find the derivative of this times this because we have two t terms multiplied. So we're going to start with a prime, then b, and then plus a, and then b prime. All right, so a prime is the derivative of this 595.2t, which gives us 595.2. And then we multiply that by b, which is our e term. Sorry, hand is moving the screen all around. There we go. And then we want a and then b prime. So a is just the 595.2t and b prime. Once again, it'll be pretty much what we found in the first derivative because we have to use the chain rule, which I don't think I explicitly stated that in the first derivative, so I apologize, but hopefully you picked up on what I was putting down. All right, so uh, yeah, that's the whole derivative, uh, the second derivative. Now we set this equal to zero, and the goal is to solve for t. Now you might ask, how the heck do we solve for t in this equation? It's very similar to, I think, one example we saw in the previous quiz, and that is we... <clears throat> excuse me, we want to factor out a greatest common factor. What do these uh, two big terms have in common? They both have the 595.2, and they both have the, uh, like the main E term. And so we want to pull out 595.2 E to the negative 0.6 T squared. And when we do that, what do we have left? So we've pulled out all of that from the first term. So really, that just leaves us with 1. For that term and then in the second term look very closely when we take out the 595 it'll leave us with that little t that's still there we took out the e term and then it'll be t times negative 1.2 t and all this equal to zero and we saw even in the last quiz problem that was like this when we have this factor equal to zero and this factor equal to zero 
This first one, the E term, can never equal zero. No matter what we plug in for T, no matter what this exponent looks like, E to the something will never equal zero. So we don't have to worry about it. The whole, the whole idea is setting this equal to zero. I'm going to multiply the t and the negative 1.2t, so we get minus 1.2t squared, and we're setting this equal to zero. And once we solve for t here, I think we're done. Uh, we might have to actually do one more thing. We'll talk about it. But um, So let's solve for t. I'm going to add the 1.2t squared to the other side, divide by 1.2, and then we'll have t squared equals... I think this is 5 sixth as a fraction and then we take the square root of both sides so we get t is plus or minus square root of 5 sixth uh, we could probably most likely just take the positive uh, t value for this if I had to guess I'm gonna just hope for the best on that um, typically you know you want plus or minus when you take the square root of both sides but we're gonna use positive 5 6 under the square root or positive square root of 5 6 so now because they are asking for the maximum rate of change, we just found the t value where the max rate of change occurs, right? So this t value should be where the max rate of change occurs. So to find the actual max rate of change, keep in mind y prime represents the rate of change. So we will plug in the t value into y prime here. Let's give it a shot in Desmos. So plugging in square root of 5, 6 into t. Let's see what we have here. So 595.2 five, times the square root of 5, 6. And then all of this times e raised to the negative 0. 0.6 times t squared. So we'll have square root of 5 over 6. And then that is being squared. So really, it's just ultimately times 5 sixth. All right. <laughs> I hope I have my parentheses correct here. <laughs> it just keeps adding a bunch more. Anyway, 329.5 is basically what we're looking for. 329 or 330, maybe if we round. So y prime with this t value plugged in is about 330 and so if we break out the eraser oh if we break out the eraser we see that 330 is in fact our answer so quite a process but this will be the process you'll basically use in this whole quiz so they're often asking what is a max or min of the rate of change so it requires you to solve or sorry, to find two derivatives, then set that second derivative equal to zero, solve for t, and then usually plug that back into the first derivative to find what that rate of change is. Um, so I'll leave it at that for this video. I'm trying to decide whether I'll do it by hand or in Excel for the next video. Uh, feel free to check it out um, regardless of what I do. I should have a second example up. All right, hope this helps. If you have any questions, let me know.